This MOU signing serves as the first step for ESA Unggul in collaboration with Academic of Entrepreneurs in its effort to realize a smart, creative, and entrepreneurial students and graduates, the vision of ESA Unggul that we all want to and strive to achieve. And before we begin, I would like to bid welcome and greet the key members of the ESA Unggul University and the Academy of Entrepreneurs. First and foremost, of course, the Rector of Universitas ESA Unggul, Bapak Dr. Insinyur Arif Kusuma Among Praja MBA IPU. Selamat datang, Bapak. Welcome. Thank you Hi. for... Nice Thank you for being you present from the Academy of Entrepreneurs. And our rector has a very tight and busy schedule. And uh, therefore, we are, I am very grateful that he's here to support the MOU signing of the two institutions. And leading this uh, initiative, leading this MOU, is actually the Faculty of Economic and Business. And we also have here the Dean and the Vice Dean of Faculty of Economy, also um, distinguished Dean and Vice Deans from uh, faculties in ESA Unggul, as well as the head of study programs. And last but not least is the CEO of Academy of Entrepreneurs, Paula Mills, who is also here with us for this MOU signing. And I know she has a tight schedule too. Hi, Paula. Honest to be here. Lovely to see you. Thank you, Preeta. Thank you for organizing this. And thank you also Faisal from our team for making this incredible connection so we can build this beautiful partnership and make a very big impact in Indonesia together with you guys. Yes. Okay, nice you. As she said, Paula is accompanied by her team from Academy of Entrepreneurs and also the Program Development and Cooperation of Academy of Entrepreneurs, Faisal Ali. So for a brief five minutes, I would like to invite our distinguished rector, Bapak Dr. Isinyor Ayf Kusuma Mong Praja, to give the speeches, as well as the CEO, Paula Mills, will also give her speech later. And uh, But first, we'll invite the Rector of Universitas Esa Unggul, Bapak Arif Kusuma Among Praja. The screen is yours, Pak. Okay, thank you for your time, uh, Ibu Berita. Uh, Honorable Chief Executive of Academy of Entrepreneur Australia, Mr. Paula Mills, and also your team, my dear colleagues, lecturer, students of ESA Unggul University. Uh, also, maybe there is a distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon to you all. First of all, I'd like to express my gratitude and highest appreciation to Mr. Paula Mill the Chief Executive of Academy of Entrepreneur Australia for the time and opportunity to attend this occasion as a speaker at the entrepreneurship seminar with the title and theme, Turning Ideas into Business, and also for the signing of a memorandum of understanding between our two institutions. Universita Esa Unggul and Academy of Entrepreneur Australia. Uh, for that, uh, let us uh, give her uh, a big applause for her presence in this occasion. Okay. Thank you very much for your attending. Uh, my my friends, my dear colleagues. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, actually a nation like Indonesia will be more, which will should be much more advanced and developed if it has many entrepreneurs. And according to the result of many scientific uh, findings and studies uh, that I've read, uh, the more the number of entrepreneurs in a country or the higher percentage of entrepreneurs in a country so that will be a higher chance for a country to become more developed and more prosperous, more prosperous. And currently in Indonesia, for, for your information, uh, the number of entrepreneurs in Indonesia is 30, uh, no, 3.5%. Uh, 
out of the total number of the population. Uh, I think compared to Malaysia, which has about 5% of the number of population become entrepreneur. And then Thailand, 5.1%. Singapore, 7.2%. China, 10%. Japan, 11%. And United States, 12%. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the data from Australia. I think it's also high compared to our country. So from this data, we can see that countries which have percentage of number of entrepreneurs are indeed developed countries. So there is a correlation between a number of entrepreneurs in a country and the development in a country. And for your additional information, Based on our recent 2018 Global Entrepreneurship Index data, out of 137 countries, Indonesia is ranked 94th in terms of entrepreneurship. I think yeah, this position is still uh, behind other countries in Southeast Asia. Uh, uh, maybe also in also uh, part of Asia, Again, and we can see that uh, Indonesia from the data, uh, it needs more and more entrepreneurs. So we, uh, as a, from the academic world, we, we feel responsible uh, to work together with the government to increase the number of entrepreneurs in Indonesia, because we know that entrepreneurs will play an important role in supporting the national, for example, economic growth, Start starting from creating jobs, uh, create increasing national income, creating added values for goods and services, and also reducing economic and social disparities, and also creating a more pros prosperous uh, society. So, you, uh, and additional information uh, that uh, um, Currently, because of the pandemic, yeah, the more of uh, more Indonesian become uh, unemployed. So we feel responsible and we are concerned uh, to call to contribute to solving the problem of job creation. I think creating the entrepreneur is one of the answer. We believe that university also have an important role in increasing the number of entrepreneur in Indonesia. So output of the higher education. Not, should not only be filled by graduate looking for work, but also those who create job. Not only job seeker, but also job creators. That's uh, what I mean to say. In fact, that actually uh, in Asamble itself, the spirit to produce the uh, entrepreneurs is already reflected in our vision of university. Uh, which says to become uh, world class based on intellectuality, creativity, and entrepreneurs. So we'd like to become a, a good finance university by creating more and more entrepreneurs. And also it uh, reflected in our motto in university, uh, smart, creative, and entrepreneurial. Uh, from, uh, so it has explicitly become spirit and main team of SA Ugol. Uh, to, uh, to become uh, a university that produces more entrepreneur actually. And with uh, the spirit will color the entire teaching learning process also. And also the progress of University of Esa Ugul. Of course that uh, I hope, no, no, of course, I hope that by collaborating with the Australia Academic of Entrepreneurs, and of course, we hope we to realize that the aspiration, uh, the our dreams and aspiration, faster and better. Okay, the um, uh, our guests, uh, Mr. Mrs. Mel and and the team, in closing, uh, on behalf of the academic community of. Songo University would like to say thank you again for you. Uh, 
who is uh, that you want to become our uh, speaker uh, today. And also, I'd like to thank you also to Ibu Perita, uh, who organized this uh, uh, our team together, and we can so we can work and collaboration together so that the event uh, today's event uh, can be carried out successfully. Thank you for your attention and uh, hopefully that the collaboration will uh, work uh, in the in the near future. Thank you very much. Well, a big thanks to you, Director, actually, for supporting this event uh, to make it happen. So the key take from your speech, I, I, I think, uh, uh, that we can take or we can note is that the rate of uh, development in a country very much correlated with the number of entrepreneurs in the country. So we have to find ways as university and being responsible for that, uh, uh, delivering graduates from ESA Ungul, we have to find ways to uh, increase the number of entrepreneurs, at least from our from our school, yeah, but, yeah, from our university. And I also like the hashtag of Academy of Entrepreneurs, which is hashtag be, on your, be your own boss, is it? or be your boss, something like that. So Pak Rektor, I'm very pleased to uh, inform you that in our uh, mini seminar here that we, we've, we've opened this event for uh, fellow students, for students um, uh, who are joining with us today in this afternoon. And uh, uh, as I've informed you that uh, this, this initiative or this collaboration will be led by the leading faculty, which is the Faculty of Economic and Business and I see the Dean here somewhere, but Trianwar, if you can perhaps say hello, because I've been, I've been meeting with Patri Anwar uh, several times and he never turned on his video, but except for now, just now. So that's why <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Pak hey. Tantri Anwar, maaf, Pak Tantri Anwar. Apa kabar, Pak? Hello, baik, baik. Thank you. Well, thank you. Okay, so now the speech from uh, Paula Mills, the CEO of the Academic of Entrepreneurs. Thank you so much. Honored to be here. And Dr. Arif, I recently got access to data that hasn't been released yet, but globally they've been ranking every country towards like who's the most entrepreneurial and Australia has made it to the seventh most entrepreneurial country in the world. Oh, okay. That's oh, good. Yeah. It's a little it's weeks by a global like researcher conducted over in Tel Aviv in um, Israel. So yes, exciting times. And it's amazing to see Australia so well recognized as well. Yeah, entrepreneurship is in our DNA here. Um, and there was another data that came out today that 51% of Australians either are an entrepreneur or work for a small business, which, 51%. which requires them yes to have the entrepreneurial mindset because okay. when you work in a small business, it's just you need to do a little bit of everything and entrepreneurship becomes a survival skill, right? You need to juggle several balls at the same time. And that's the reason why we created Academy of Entrepreneurs. So Academy of Entrepreneurs was born from a problem that needed to be solved, which was why is it so hard for people to find jobs? Why is it so hard for companies to find talent? And why was it that so many entrepreneurs around the world were failing considering that information is free? Right now, we can go on Google, we can listen to podcasts, we can attend webinars such as the one today, and information is free. But there was no one bridging this gap towards helping people find the life purpose and solve a problem while developing the right skills to do it. And that's the, this is how Academy Spinners blossomed into the world. It's been an incredible journey. We currently have students from 68 nationalities studying with us around the world, where we empower them with the right entrepreneurial skills and network. Because for you to succeed, it's not enough for you to be the greatest photographer, designer, and doctor, or farmer. You can have any skill in the world, but if you don't know how to manage your time, your money, your relationships, get clients, grow the business, build strategy, but also if you don't have a strong network, like you can see us today, today we are a very beautiful, strong network between Indonesia, Australia, and I can see some of our colleagues over from the Philippines as well. We're never gonna succeed. And today we were running some events at our campus and we were talking about that. Entrepreneurship is about the skills, but also the network. 
So today I will be sharing our Instagram, Facebook, and I even suggest everybody on the chat box through Facebook and also here through Zoom. Share your Instagram, your Facebook, your business details so we can all connect with each other and support each other. Because imagine if every single one of us at the end of today creates a business and all over a hundred of us recommend two friends for each one's business. We would have so much business, we would never ever need to do marketing because that would just continue growing. And this is what entrepreneurship is. Entrepreneurship is about collaboration, which is where what we are starting today. So thank you, Faisal, Dr. Faisal from our team and Frita for collaborating and making this happen. This is the beginning of something amazing. So I will be sharing two little surprises at the end of the presentation. And today's presentation, I'm going to be covering everything you need to do to turn an idea into a business. So the top 10 steps, we have worked with over 20,000 entrepreneurs to build this initial presentation you guys are going to be learning about. And honestly, if you follow step by step, and I promise you the very easy steps, you're guaranteed to succeed and also save at least 100,000 US dollars worth of mistakes. Because when we are starting a business, unfortunately, we don't know what to do. But once you have the right education and tools like what we created at Camp Spinners, you're going to be saving a lot of time, money, and mistakes. And this is what we're going to be sharing. So today's presentation, feel free to screenshot the screen, but also you can send us an email or a message through Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And we will share this presentation is a gift from Australia to you guys to help everyone at Isa Ungul to become an incredible entrepreneur. And remember that today is just the beginning. So if you start a business and tomorrow you have a question, message us through Instagram, Facebook, and we'll always be there to help you guys. And also hopefully bring your businesses to Australia and around the world. So thank you. Thank you. Well, to thank you. Thank you, new family. Welcome to our family and thank you, new family in Indonesia. Thank you, Paula. Um, it's, it's very well represented. Your vision is to bridge the gap, right? Bridge the gap within, between what is needed and uh, what's there. And you're filling the gap in the Academy of Entrepreneurs. Amazing, 68 uh, nationals studying in uh, Academy of Entrepreneurs. And uh, you also mentioned that it, does, it is not sufficient just to have the skill, but also the network which is what we are doing today, this afternoon. And that's why we are signing the MOU, Pak Rektor, uh, which we have done so electronically. And if I may just show the certificate to, as a proof to everyone that we did sign and we have signed the MOU so that now we can proceed um, to translating this MOU into activities between the two institutions, um, ESA Unggul and also Academy of Entrepreneurs. There you go. Um, the signatures of our distinguished uh, rector and also CEO Paula Mills. Thank you very much for showing that. And I think now we might as well go to the main event, which is a uh, presentation uh, by Paula Mills. And she, she will have around uh, 50 minutes, I think, or 60 minutes. And uh, um, she will moderate her own presentation <laughs> because I asked the team whether she will be taking any questions later on. And the team said, oh, she, she'll do it fine. She'll do it herself. She'll, she'll see if she uh, can take questions by raise hands or by chat box. Uh, Paula Mills does it all. <laughs> Don't all right. worry, Frita. I, I'll be helping her. Nico and will be helping her. Questions, you can write them in any language and we can go and Google Translate. As a team, we can collaborate. So just feel free to ask us as many questions. Amazing. So, perfect. Can I start yeah. sharing my screen? Yes, I do would like to remind you one thing though. Please speak slower. I have put little signs around the presentation. I have little signs for me to see and remind myself. Thank you, Paula. So students, if you have questions, uh, Bapa Ibu, if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate to type it in on the chat box. Um, we'll attend to your question later. Paula, uh, the screen is yours. Thank you. So today I'll be sharing with you guys our top tips on how you can turn absolutely any idea into the world into a very successful business. So first of all, I wanted us to acknowledge how lucky we are to have survived 2020 and have made it to 2021 because the power has shifted. 
Hundreds of years ago, the powers belonged to churches and kings, and then it got shifted into the hands of governments. Then multinationals started taking the power of the world, restructuring rules around the world. And recently, that power has been given to the hands of entrepreneurs. So by the end of today, you will have all of the get started on your business. And I can share with confidence. You have the power of changing the world. Whatever it is that you want to create an impact as an entrepreneur with a simple internet connectivity, you can create any impact you want. Because the powers have shifted now from organizations to individuals. So with a simple internet connection, from today onwards, you can create a business that can trade between any, any country, so creating services and products and collaboration at a global level. The only person that can stop you from succeeding is yourself, which is another thing that I will be talking about today. It is estimated that 50% of the workforce as of the end of last year is now composed of business owners and freelancers. So we need to reshift the way we see the world, the way we think of ourselves, the way we are looking at building our careers. And we need to stop thinking about how can I get the job and shift our mindset towards how do I create the job, which is exactly what Dr. Ip was saying. It was, we're not job seekers. We are now job creators. It is our responsibility. Currently in the world, there are 7.8 billion people and it is your choice to decide if you want to compete as an employee or turn 7.8 people around the world into clients. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, they're all free tools that billions of people have downloaded onto the phones and millions of people use it every single second. That means that any business idea you have, you can throw it out into the world for free get feedback, start collecting data, start building a database and hopefully convert it into customers. So my question to you today is what do you choose? Do you choose to compete with 7.8 billion people around the world? Because now through the power of the internet, everybody can take a job. Or do you choose to turn 7.8 people around the world into your customers so you can grow your business and your impact in the world around the world? How can you stand out in 2021 by studying entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is a survival skill. We live in a world where the future is built of uncertainty and the future belongs to creators and innovators. And this is what we are going to be learning today. Entrepreneurship, I will say it many times today, is a survival skill. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys our top 10 tips on how you can start a business, not tomorrow, today. And as what Preeta was saying, our hashtag, and you can see it behind Nico's background, is boss your future. You are the future of your world. You can achieve anything, but you need to take action. You need to position yourself as a leader and take action. And don't worry if you make a mistake along the way. I have been an entrepreneur since the age of nine. Every business I've ever created has won many awards around the world. And I will tell you a secret. I make mistakes every day, but they're tiny mistakes. They're so small, you can't even notice them. And it's an opportunity that every time we fail, we fail forward because we get closer and closer towards perfection, to the best product and best service around the world. Little warning, you won't get any results out of today's presentation if you don't boss your future. So if you can learn something about today's presentation, is the importance of taking action, collaborating and learning every day, but action, action, action every single day. So it's time now for action. So let's get started on how do we turn any idea in the world into a business. Number one step for you to become a successful entrepreneur, it's not your business idea. It's not how much money you have. It's not how lucky you are. Number one is self-awareness. Who are you? What is it that you love doing? What is it that the world needs that puts you in the state of flow, that things just naturally happen because you're doing what you love and you are already good at that and you're going to focus on getting better at that. So I would like to first share this quick little video because it will teach you about the power of Ikigai, which is connecting your true life purpose with a gap, a problem in the world that needs to be solved. 
There's a Japanese word, word called ikigai. It's used to help us understand our relationship with the world around us and how to choose what we want to do with ourselves. The ikigai concepts ask you to understand the things that you love doing, the things which you're great, the things that others need, and the things that others will pay for. So for you, it's about knowing what you love and knowing what you can really do. And for others, it's about understanding their needs and understanding what they're willing to pay for. These are all different things. When you find something that you love and at which you're great, the concept of Ikigai calls that your passion. And there's a lot of commencement speech address kind of thing that says, follow your passion. I'm not a big Passion is all about you. It's all this big self-centered idea that the world should just provide for what you love and what you're great at. If you get away from the idea that we all should just be following our own passion, that we should be sensitive to what the world needs and what it's willing to pay for, then we might find ourselves going down the love route and providing for what the world needs, which Ikigai calls a mission. Or we might find ourselves going down what we're really great at and what the world is willing to pay for, which Ikigai calls a profession. If we completely set ourselves aside, if we weren't considering ourselves, but we were only responding to the world around us, that is, others, we might find that the world is willing to pay for something that it needs. And despite the fact that we don't love it and we might not be great at it, we could call it a vocation. Sometimes that's called a job. The ideal is to find what you love, what you're great at, that the world needs and is willing to pay for. Find your ikigai. And this is what I get asked on a daily basis. I get phone calls, messages, emails, DMs through Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn going, Paula, how can I become a billionaire and be a very successful entrepreneur? What is the next great business idea? And my comment is always, what is it that you're great at that you absolutely love doing that you can get paid for because you're really good at and that the world needs? And once you combine that, a fire will light inside your stomach that you will jump out of bed every morning and you will fight towards finding solutions for the business. Any challenge that comes in, the bigger the challenge, the more excited you're going to become towards succeeding and implementing solutions and growing your business. And that's what business is about. And that's when I want to take you to step two of starting a business. So step one is knowing yourself. Step two is identify problems out there in the world. Businesses solve problems, full stop. Businesses don't exist for you to make money. Businesses don't exist so you can have financial freedom and more holidays or buy a beautiful house. Businesses exist to solve a problem. The more successful you are at solving a problem, the more you're going to achieve your personal goals. But you don't build a business for your personal goals. You build a business because there's a problem in the world that you have the skills and the passion to do it, succeed and create an impact. So you need to understand what is the real problem that you're solving? Is the problem in your head? Have you connected with the end user that is feeling the pain? A, bo a water bottle industry, where is the technology behind a bottle of water? Very little, but we need to drink water. Fast foods, is it healthy for us? Absolutely not. But there's a market that wants fast foods that is cheap and quick that you drive through, you get it and you eat on the way out. So every business solves a problem. So you need to understand what is your problem, the problem that you feel that it's your responsibility to fix. If you don't know where to start, little simple idea, go to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals page. 
over there, you will identify 17 global problems that are worth billions of dollars. If you can find the solution to solving 1% of the world's poverty, 1% of the world's hunger, if you can improve the world's health by 1%, you're going to become more than a billionaire. You're going to become a trillionaire. Again, businesses is about us solving a problem. And all of that comes from emotional intelligence, from self-awareness. So my suggestion is take some time to do your Ikigai, to connect with your true purpose. Identify a problem worth solving that you feel a connection with. Because right now, I could make a list of a thousand problems that need to be solved. But which one is the one that I'm mainly connected? And then start developing your one-page business plan. Don't spend the next three months. Don't outsource someone else to write your business plan. You need to write and identify what is the problem? What is the solution? What is your unique value proposition? What is this unique skill that you have that turns into an unfair advantage? What are the different customer segments that we have? What are the channels you're going to use to promote your business? What are the key metrics you're going to use to measure the impact and the results? How much is it going to cost to operate inside of the business? And how are you going to make money and try having more than one revenue stream? And be inspired. Look at Grab, Uber, Airbnb. Look at the big businesses and look at the business model and just go, how can I get a little bit of the different business models and disrupt the industry that I am solving this problem for? Next thing is for us to think of a name. A name that is legal that you can use that legally hasn't been used by anyone else in the country you're going to be operating. If you plan on launching your business in Indonesia and staying only in Indonesia, have a look at that. But also have a look at other countries because most likely because of the digital transformation, you can operate in any country. You can sell most products and services to any country. So look at it. Can I legally use this name in other countries? Is it easy to say? Is it easy to spell? Is it easy to remember? And also, is it easy to understand? I travel a lot around the world and I go to a lot of startup competitions where people create these weird names. So when people ask them, what do they do? They have to explain what the business does because the business name is not clear enough. This is why at Academy of Entrepreneurs, we have this name. It starts with the letter A, so alphabetical order, we're always on top. And also, it's just clear, what do we do? We are a school for entrepreneurs, Academy of Entrepreneurs. So try having a name that you legally can use, easy to say, easy to spell, and most importantly, easy to remember, so that the next day when they're talking to a friend about the business idea that you have or a product that they bought from you, they will remember the name. If you want to create something more innovative, this is a fantastic website. It's called Business Name Generator, where you type in a couple of keywords and through artificial intelligence, it will give you some tips on names. Once you've chosen a name that you absolutely love, go onto this other website called the Name Checker and you type in the name and it will confirm within one click for free if the name is available for you to register the website side, the Instagram, the Facebook, the YouTubes, and so forth. So very important for you to have a name that you can use across all the different channels where you are going to be connecting, building a relationship, getting the attention of your future customer. Then logo. We need to design a simple logo that it's easy to print. This is why the Academy of Entrepreneurs is a triangle. Easy to print. It prints on any material, on any texture, on any color. So in this, you go into Squarespace, logo, you type in the keyword. It will show you icons and you can just drag these icons. And again, in a few seconds, you can have a simple, effective, modern logo for free. The next step is for you to build your website. My personal platform for building websites is Wix. You go in there and you type the industry. So are you going to be opening a hair salon, a fashion business, a a jury business or you're going to be opening a service business and you type it in there and then it will show you hundreds of templates pre-designed for your industry and then you can drop your logo put some extra images you put your contact details and write the text but it's got pre-made templates according to the user experience of your customers when they are making a purchase through your industry another very important tip when you are choosing images and icons, you cannot pull them out of Google because that belongs to someone else. It's their intellectual property. 
So Unsplash is a fantastic website for you to get very high quality images that you can use for commercial reasons for free. And Flat Icons is a fantastic website for you to get icons for you to use for free. Because again, photography and icons are artwork that belongs to someone else. And you don't want anyone contacting you and suing you for using the image illegally. So please make sure that you're getting them from a source that you can legally use for commercial reasons. Your next step is to do the proof of concept. So let's go back. You understood who you are, understood a business is about solving a problem. You designed the perfect business name. You've designed a simple website for free. Now you need to go out into the market and just go, hello, I am here. Is anyone interested in buying my chocolate cake? What is the price you're willing to pay? So now it is time for you to throw your product or service out there in the market and start seeing who is willing to pay for it. No, your grandmother, your boyfriend, your teacher at Essa Ungul, they are not your market research. Unless you plan on building a business and selling only to them, you need to find real customers that will give you real feedback. And yes, it hurts when someone tells you that it's not good enough or they don't like your price or your flavor yet. But this is an opportunity for you to fix it and launch something better in the market instead of spending millions of hours and a lot of money and not getting anywhere. So how can we conduct market research? through surveys, interviews, and landing pages. So these days on Instagram, you can post a photo and you can ask people to vote. You can also create a landing page. A lot of these tools are free. And you can also conduct interviews. Invite 10 people that are aligned to your target audience and ask them for feedback. What package would they like? What is the price they would like? Where would they like to see your product placed? Where would be the ideal place for them to pick up the product? Conduct market research. The more research you conduct, the closest to perfection and the faster you will succeed every single day. Your next step is to set goals. Entrepreneurs, it is natural to be within us to get really excited and think we can change the world. Yes, you can change the world, but you need to know what is the direction you're working towards. Where are you going? What is the timeline? And create specific, measurable, attainable, relevant time-based goal. So your goal needs to be clear. You need to be able to measure it along the way. It needs to be achievable because if it's not achievable, it's not fun. We're not going to get anyone we can't measure. It needs to be relevant and time-based. So let's watch a quick little video on what is a SMART goal. I personally set SMART goals every morning, every week, every month, every quarter, every year, every three years, and every five years. So everything is designed and then I break it down and then I know that I am progressing, but I also can celebrate the wins along the way. So this is an example. Goal setting is a powerful tool in increasing productivity. In fact, setting goals can increase your productivity by 11 to 25%, but actually setting and working towards goals can be challenging. So let's get smart about goals. S, specific. Ask yourself what you want to accomplish, and most importantly, why? M, make it measurable. Are you able to tell when you've reached your goal? A, attainable. Goals should stretch you so you feel excited, but within your current ability. R, relevant. Set goals that are going to positively impact your life. Does this goal fit in with your other life's goals and dreams? T, time-based. A goal with a time deadline will create a sense of urgency and give you the energy you need to complete it. Finally, once you achieve your goal, it's time to celebrate and set the next goal. Step seven towards your entrepreneurial success. For you to succeed, as Preet and I mentioned a couple of times today, you need to network and you also need to have a network of mentors. And have different mentors, mentors in your industry, Mentors that are experts in finance, in marketing, in human resources, in growth, in global scalability. So have different mentors. The bigger the network you have, the faster you will succeed. According to research conducted by Forbes, 78% of entrepreneurs say that they succeeded because of the network. So don't isolate yourself if you are a chef in your kitchen, if you're a scientist in the laboratory, 
you need to spend time networking. My suggestion is attend at least one networking event a day. And it doesn't matter if right now you're working from home. Right now, we are networking. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Connect with me on Instagram. Connect with me on Facebook. Ask me questions. Connect with everybody in today's webinar and start growing your network. You don't need to leave your house to grow your network. Connect. Send a personalized message. Ask for feedback. Share your business. Celebrate your wins with the world, but connect and grow your community every single day because it is a very important investment for your future. Step eight of having a successful business is understanding how are you going to make money? And this is when we talk about revenue models. So there's different ways of making money. So you can make money through advertisements, paper clips, subscriptions, commissions. So different businesses have different models. So for example, airlines, how do they make money? By getting you from A to B. But these days they have subscriptions where you can pay and get extra discounts. They, you can top up so you can carry an extra luggage. It's an extra source of revenue. They've got partnerships with companies such as Airbnb, Uber, and Grab. So you can Grab waiting for you at a discounted rate and they will get a little commission. So play with different sources of revenue. Don't put all eggs into one basket. And no matter how traditional your business is, maybe you're going to open a law practice as a lawyer. Maybe you're going to open a hospital, a clinic. Maybe you're going to open a flower shop. It doesn't matter how traditional it is. Break the rules. For example, a flower shop. Why not build a subscription? Who wouldn't like to have fresh flowers arriving at the home every week? So instead of you waiting for the customer to come back, send it to them on a subscription. And then you know that every month you have X number of customers to deliver the flower or chocolates or whatever it is that you're putting through the business. Look at ways that you can digitalize and have multiple revenue streams. Step number nine is marketing which is how are you going to position your product out in the, in the world? How are you going to promote it? What is the physical evidence? Who are the people involved? If you're going to open a yoga studio, you need to have very beautiful, calm, happy people from reception in your accounts team, doing your marketing. You don't want to talk about wellness and positivity and have someone brood at reception, right? So understand that the marketing is not just the packaging or the pricing you put into it. It is the product, the look and feel, the process, the touch points. It is said that someone engages with our brand through seven different touch points before they purchase. So how does your website look? Your Instagram, are they using the same fonts, the same message? the same look and feel? Are you giving free eBooks along the way? Are you hosting free webinars? What are the seven touch points and the different places where people can engage with your brand? And lastly, the 10th is work on what we call in the entrepreneurial world, the elevator pitch. If you beat someone in the elevator and they ask you, what do you do? Between the third level and ground level, you have a few seconds to catch their attention and wow them with your business in a way that they will remember, they will share that with someone else, they will buy or hopefully even invest into your business. So let's quickly look at a fantastic university student's elevator pitch. My name is Josh Light and I'm the CEO of CupAd and we believe that we have the most effective form of advertising available in the market today. Our advertisements are exposed to customers for 2,220 seconds on average. Now what kind of advertising has that kind of exposure time? Ladies and gentlemen, we advertise on coffee cups. That's right, we put your brand in their hand. So how does coffee cup advertising work? Well, we got an advertiser. They pay us money. We produce paper coffee cups with their advertisement or brand on it. Then we give these coffee cups to coffee stands for free. Now, why does someone want to advertise on a coffee cup? Because it takes an individual 37 minutes to drink a cup of coffee on average. That person's going to have to look at the cup, drink, look at the cup, drink 20 times before it's fully consumed. And that person's going to move around like a mobile billboard, exposing that brand to at least six different individuals before that cup is drank. Why does cup, what's in it for cup ad? We make 13 cents of profit on every single cup that we distribute. And what's in it for the coffee stands? Well, when most people think about coffee stands, they think about Starbucks. But what about the 25,000 coffee stands in this nation that have plain white cups like this? They don't have, they don't have the economies to scale to put their own brand on the cup. So we give them free cups. They save $15,000 a year by not buying cups. 
They like these savings so much, ladies and gentlemen, that approximately 80% of the stands that we've con contacted have signed exclusivity agreements to distribute our cups. What kind of momentum have we started for this company? In the last month alone, we got 58 coffee stands in California to sign exclusivity agreements with us to distribute our cups. If we continue to get 58 coffee stands every single month for the next 12 months, we will have 700 coffee stands at the end of the year. With 700 coffee stands, we can move 8 million cups a month. And at 13 cent profit, 8 million cups a month, we're making over a million dollars of profit every single month. And we've already started this, gentlemen. In fact, our first customer, Overstock.com, will do their cups at the California market in 21 days. Thank you very much. Wouldn't you want to invest into their business? Huge market, a problem that they're solving, a great opportunity, and he's made it a win-win situation for it his business along with the cafes and along with the advertisers. So everything I shared with you, little surprise, costs you zero dollars. To develop a business idea, zero dollars. The perfect business model, zero dollars. The business name, the tool that I shared with you, zero dollars. Develop a business logo, zero dollars. Create your website, zero dollars. Proof of concept, zero dollars. Your strategy, zero dollars. Finding a mentor, zero dollars. Revenue model, zero dollars. Your marketing can be done these days with zero dollars and pitching a business effectively, zero dollars. So as I mentioned at the beginning of today's presentation, I have just saved you guys over a hundred thousand dollars worth of strategies for building a business and also saved you from making many mistakes and wasting time. But the most important thing for you to effectively design a business is to stop for a second and develop a business around a problem that touches your heart. So it is a problem that you truly care about solving that has a positive impact, but also naturally uses your skills and strength. And the 11th tip is never, ever, ever give up. And this is why it's important to create a business that we feel a connection with the problem you're solving. Because when you truly connect with that problem, you won't give up. And that's what you need to do as an entrepreneur. Because entrepreneurs to succeed, you need to be persistent. Because every day will be full of challenges. But when we do what we love, we will always find solutions. And this is just the beginning. It's the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey. As I mentioned, this presentation, you can send us an email just through the website. You click on Academy of Entrepreneurs. Send us an email. We'll send you a copy of this presentation. I will also be sharing it with Preeta. They can email through to everybody at the universe and everybody that attended, ask us questions. And this is the beginning of a very fulfilling and exciting journey that you're about to embark on through Academy of Entrepreneurs. And why do we exist as a company? Because we want to give you the entrepreneurial skills and network to succeed. Because we already know that you're talented and passionate about many things. But now it's about polishing that talent into an effective business idea with the right tools and the right network. So today we shared many priceless tools that cost you zero dollars. And this is what we're gonna be doing over the next few years together with you while you're studying. Recently, we won several awards such as Business of the Year. So that just validates how our work is not only just creating an impact in the world, but also receiving global recognition. And now through you guys, so through um, Esther Ungu, we are now opening our doors and delivering for the first time ever over there in Indonesia, which we're really excited to shape you guys and transform you guys into really successful entrepreneurs. So I invite you to join the movement. And over the next few weeks, we will be sharing lots of exciting things, but this is just a summary of what we offer. So Academy of Entrepreneurs has accredited curriculum. So we're the world's first accredited incubator. That means that we incubate your business idea. You don't need to have a business idea to study with us. We will help you identify a problem that you feel you can solve by developing it into a business. And we will shape you. So we have programs for corporates, obviously teacher training. Every course of ours can be delivered online, self-paced online like we're doing live, or we can train your teachers to be able to teach and collaborate in the classroom space. We've got the Global Accelerator. We've got the Scale Up program, boot camps that go from one day to four weeks. We have study tours. So as soon as you want to come and visit us in Australia, we will welcome you and pick you up at the airport, take you over to our campus and start incubating your ideas. We also have diplomas and advanced diplomas that are one year long each. And we have internship opportunities for you to get work experience in the startup space. So 
Over the next few weeks, we'll have be having an announcement over the date, but we will be working together with you guys, every single one of you as teachers and students and helping you transform any idea you have into a successful business. So I will be sharing a video that shows our example of how the classes will work. This is a big, bold project and it's going to take great minds to crack it. So Dan and I, uh, Dan from BBC and me from Limehouse Creative, we've been spending the last weeks with the students. Um, it's been pretty full on. There's been 30 hours, 35 hours teaching, branding, advertising, marketing 101. Um, it's been a hell of an experience. It's a lot for them to learn, but um, it's a great way to sort of engage with them rather than the normal sort of academia and books and what have you. We got down to real stories, showed them real life examples, uh, you know, everything that's important for being an entrepreneur. <laughs> Tonight I had the opportunity to hear the top three and four, three or four pictures from these extraordinary entrepreneurs of Australia. I was blown away by the creativity and the expression and the um, imagination of these incredible young people in our country. Um, what I heard consistently through each of the executions was a passion for this country and its creativity and its ability for people to achieve whatever they want to. And that's what entrepreneurship is about. Um, so to have that played back to me in the form of a nation brand was really quite moving. The quality of the videos that were produced were exceptional uh, and one of them moved me almost to tears um, to hear their sentiments on this country. Each of the ideas executed in different ways um, but collectively articulated some really special attributes of this country and that's what this whole project was about. Let's get to the essence in a simple way about what's great about this country and let's celebrate that and the people in this course were able to do that over the course of a very short period of time. So I do thank the Academy of Entrepreneurs for the opportunity to have this project come to life and for sharing uh, with us the inspiring ideas from young uh, entrepreneurs in our country. And that's what we will be doing over the next few weeks. So we will pick a start date. You will get access to our app with eight modules of content on how to transform any idea into a successful business. We will log in every week for one to two hours to run a masterclass and do mentoring group mentoring. And then after four weeks of classes on the fifth week, you will be pitching to a panel of judges, which if you want, we can bring in our friends from Google, from the United Nations, ambassadors and consuls from different countries to judge you and give you feedback on your idea. But most importantly, they will also connect you to their connections so your business can become even more successful faster. Because as we know, running a business is about the entrepreneurial skills, but also the network that we have. So on stage two, Krita and I are working on embedding our Australian diploma into the curriculum over at ESSA. That means that not straight away, maybe in two to three months, while you study at ESSA UNGU, you can also do Academy of Entrepreneurs subjects over in Indonesia. And then over a period of one year, you can graduate from an Australian curriculum of the diploma which makes your pathway into two of any university into Australia. And also you get a double qualification while you are studying over there in Indonesia. You can obviously always start the course of Academy Spinners in Indonesia online. We have start, so classes are every Monday, so you can start at any time. 
and by you graduating you can come in and complete subjects over your summer holidays here in Australia or complete the advanced diploma and you will learn things such as emotional intelligence, marketing for startups, finance for success, how to build a dream team, how do you hire your first freelancer, how to develop systems and technologies for you to automate and cut down the, the costs in your business, how to pitch to win, how to understand that the bigger the risk, the bigger the rewards, but how do you make calculated risk and how do you project manage through design thinking techniques and understand different business models that you can implement within your business. Every week we have masterclasses with some incredible partners such as Google, Zero, Microsoft, Startups, United Nations, LinkedIn and so forth. So you get exposed to not only the best entrepreneurs as teachers, but also the big startups and you get access to some of the latest tools. So keep an eye on our Instagram and Facebook because we have some events coming up with the United Nations, LinkedIn and Google over the next four weeks, which is really exciting. And you're more than welcome to join all of them. Now from today onwards, because we officially signed the MOU, you get access to all of our events free of cost for the rest of your life. So every week we run several events. A lot of these events are run online, so you can access them all the way from Indonesia. Just sign up online and you get access to all of them for free. And automatically, every single one of you guys as students and teachers and faculty members over in Indonesia are now part of our community and get to network with over 65 nationalities around the world on a daily basis. So you can develop your entrepreneurial skills and network for you to succeed and make a positive impact. So before I finish and take questions, I just wanna invite us to connect. So my name is Paula Mills, you can see it here, and I also put my Instagram here on the side, but connect with me on Instagram. Instagram is the easiest way to find me. We are on Instagram, on TikTok, on LinkedIn, Facebook, add me everywhere. If you want to talk about business, come to me on Instagram or on LinkedIn. Those are the two easiest ways for you to reach me. I personally don't use Facebook. We have a Facebook page for Academy of Entrepreneurs. And connect with us on LinkedIn and Instagram through the Academy of Entrepreneurs page as well, so you can get free business tips every single day we post tips and tools for you to use for you to succeed so please remember to connect and as i take the questions i'll pop in my instagram nico can you pop in my instagram url here on the chat box so everybody can add and then you can absolutely guys Thank you, dear Nico. Thank you. And remember, guys, boss your future every day. You are the owner of your future, of your happiness, of your success, of your personal development. And also, you're the boss of your bank accounts. If you want to achieve everything in the world, you can achieve it, but you need to take action. Take action, develop the entrepreneurial skills, but also work within a network. You don't need to know the answer to everything. Ask for help collaborate, have conversations. This is what we're doing today. We are collaborating. We're uniting our forces with you guys to bring a positive impact in Indonesia. And then my goal is that once we're able to empower a lot of you guys into successful entrepreneurs, I want to help you guys grow your businesses into other countries so we can then rebuild the economy of Indonesia and create even more jobs in Indonesia and create a better future that creates an impact, social impact businesses. So thank you so much. So these are our contact details. Our email is info at a study and this number, you can reach us on WhatsApp and Viber any time of the day. And we're here to help you guys. Paula, thank you. The CEO of Academy of Entrepreneurs, what a fantastic presentation. Hashtag boss your future. That was the hashtag. Uh, yeah. I got it wrong the first time. So let me just uh, summarize three very important points that I got from your presentation. And hopefully this is also a shared or a common uh, uh, note that we, that we have here uh, from the presentation. The first one is that uh, we're planning to have a hackathon. Uh, yeah. probably that's the shortest term that we can say. Hackathon is a four-week thing and we're developing with the leading faculty, which is the Faculty of Economic Business. It'll be very exciting. And um, the uh, Indonesian community are now very uh, into Korean uh, serial drama. So there is, there is a particular drama called Startup. So <laughs> students, if you want to know what Hackathon is, it's similar like what a uh, Startup Korean uh, series is about. And Paula also mentioned now that we have signed the MOU, the understanding, uh, memorandum of understanding, we are now able to access um, the, the information and the events uh, free uh, from Academy of Entrepreneurs, uh, which is fantastic. And the third one is I think um, 
uh, I would like to mention about your slide on revenue stream. And you mentioned something um, that, that, that that's for me is very, very inspiring that no matter how traditional uh, our field that we are interested or great at, uh, we can, it is always useful to, to have entrepreneurial knowledge. So for example, you said how to open a law firm if you're a lawyer, that's a very traditional field. And the stream of revenue is also very traditional. But um, as the uh, director also mentioned that ESA Ungul is, is responsible and we want to uh, develop entrepreneurial skill for everyone um, interdiscipline. So not just, I know that the leading faculty is also traditional, which is faculty of economy and business, but it is for all. It is for all students uh, from various, uh, uh, from various uh, study programs and faculty. In fact, um, entrepreneurship is taught in ESA uh, Ungul as a mandatory subject. So we have basic level and then specific level for, for certain faculties, like our biotechnology de uh, department has a biotechpreneurship isn't it amazing? So we do have two questions here uh, in the chat box, if you will take them, Paula. Uh, there was one from Seto. Uh, now, Paula, you mentioned that you have been in business from nine year old, was it? So Seto here is asking you, when is it a good time to decide? Um, when should we quit a business and start another business? So, uh, maybe, so the question is essentially, how do we know that the business is not effective and do we have to stop it and when do we stop it and how do we turn to other businesses? I think it's very important to not put all eggs into the basket. Before we talk about quitting your business, I think it's very important for you to consider when should I leave my full-time job and set up a business? And I always say for as long as you can have both of them, have both of them and over-focus. It's 24 hours in a day. Over-focus and manage your time so you can run your business whether it's a hobby initially, and as you build traction and start getting results, you can start negotiating with your boss to do less and less hours. Now, business, like everything in life, they transform, they evolve, and changes. There's cycles, there's seasons in the world, right? There's summer, there's spring, and the same way we get older, we get more knowledgeable, we make decisions, we move to different cities, surprises come along the way, we meet someone amazing that changes our life, and it's the same when it comes to business. There's new opportunities every single day. But if you find that your business model is too old school, before you think about quitting, just go back to the whiteboard and just go, why am I in this business? What I love doing is I get a piece of paper and I fold it in half. And in one side, I write the things that I love doing. And the other side, I write the things that I hate doing. Because businesses exist to solve a problem. And then I go, what are the things that I love doing in the business that I'm getting great results? And what are the things that I don't enjoy doing? And how can I bring other people that do these tasks so I can continuously grow the business by doing what I love? Then another activity that I do every time that businesses get hard because we all go through challenges, I stop and I just go, if I was Steve Jobs from Apple, how would I disrupt what I am doing right now? If I was Bill Gates from uh, Microsoft, how would I disrupt? If I was Bob Marley or a president of a country, how would I disrupt what I'm doing now? So I start looking at the problem from an outside perspective. I start looking at my industry from an outside perspective, and then you start receiving new ideas of business models and revenue models. The reality is that you can't do the same thing every day expecting the same results. So even if you own the most successful business in Indonesia or the most successful business in your industry, if you continue doing the same thing, you will not get the same results because technology, competitors, everything is threatening us. But you need to put some seconds or minutes aside every day to just go, am I doing what I love? How can I use more of my strengths every day? Where are the new market opportunities? Do I need to stop for a few hours or a few days and conduct market research to see why aren't my customers coming back? Why are people clicking through my website and not paying? Why are people dropping out of the subscription model? So take some time to understand and you need to pivot. An example that I'm sure all of us can connect with is Netflix. We were so used to going to a store, getting a tape, bringing it back the next day, having to rewind it. So when Netflix came into the market, everybody laughed at them. 
But what they did is they kept on disrupting, but also they kept on pivoting towards market demand for every single country. So if you love reading, there's the No Rules Rules book that Netflix recently launched, 100% recommend you to read it. And it just talks about how the founder made a lot of mistakes in previous businesses, how they still make mistakes every day, but how they keep a very close relationship with your customers. Because what happens is that customers will share the right feedback and sometimes it hurts. But every time they share feedback, they're giving you insights and ideas. And if you listen to them, and if a lot of customers are asking for the same thing, that means there's a great business opportunity there for you. So the bigger the problem, the bigger the opportunity. And unfortunately, the problem sometimes is inside your business. But don't give up. Speak to customers. Conduct market research. And maybe, depending on how it's going, your industry has been completely disrupted. Get the database and sell them something else. So spend time connecting with your end user. I travel the whole world. I can see a few of our colleagues from our team are here in the call. And they know I spend a lot of time with the team with the students to understand what are the gaps, what are the problems? And then we build teams that solve those problems. And a lot of the times as a founder of many businesses, I go and I do it myself because I care about our business success because I care about the impact that we are creating in the world and growing every single day. So don't give up on your business idea. You will need to pivot, disrupt, change you will make mistakes and you will fail but you will fail forward and there will be a step closer towards your success so no matter what business right. you, do, you need to do what you love if you don't love your business anymore try polishing it up fixing it a little bit and sell it to someone else that's my suggestion ah sell it yeah. so polish it up fixing it a little bit and then sell if it you're not in love with your problem the problem that you're solving in the business move on to the next one so it's not a matter of that it's a poor idea to begin with, but you just no longer love it. Every business idea in the world, there is someone needing it. Whether it's right. the product or the cheapest, the fastest, there's always someone that needs it. You need to connect your product to the end user. Right. So the next question is, I think, a little bit related to the previous question. The next question is from Agus Firmansha. Mm -hmm. um, uh, speaking about idea, uh, which one would be better to follow an existing idea? I guess that's what the question is, or create a new one? Because we know the, in the world, um, there's a saying that there's a saying, uh, there's nothing new under the sun. And that's a great idea. There's, there's, there's mediocre idea, poor idea. Uh, but you said it doesn't matter what the idea is, as long as you love it, you can polish it and turn it into business, right? So ideas like Netflix, it's not new. So can we use that idea and polish it and make a new business? Or is it mandatory for entrepreneurs to create a new, totally new idea? Look, when we are designing a business, there's different ways of doing a business. You can solve a problem and look for customers. But maybe if you're great on social media or great at networking within the university environment, you already got your network. So build a business that solves a problem that your community is looking for. Now, let's look at Preeta's example of Netflix. For you to disrupt Netflix, for you to compete with Netflix, it's not going to be easy. I mean, like, that's just common sense. Like, they've spent billions of dollars over the last over 10 years to get to the stage where they are. But you can disrupt and implement new solutions. So I was speaking to one of our colleagues, part of the Academy Spinners team, and he has purchased a service that is embedded into Netflix where this staff member of Academy Spinners can connect with his partner and watch Netflix together because they are located currently due to the situation in two different cities. So they organize a date, they get popcorn, they get a glass of wine and they connect at nighttime on a Friday and they watch the same movie across two different cities. So they've identified an issue within Netflix, which is you watch and it's lonely. And most of us have gone through lonely nights over the last few years because of many things, whether you're traveling, running a business or studying or living in a different city, or we miss sometimes, I don't know, our grandparents. Wouldn't it be nice to watch a movie on a Sunday with our grandparents on the other side of the world? Of course you would. So maybe look at understanding what is the problem that the business you already like has solve it. You can sell it for millions of dollars. Look at um, Instagram. Instagram had, I think, 13 staff and they sold it to from billions of dollars over to Facebook. Now, Facebook has re Facebook acquired 
WhatsApp as well, which is globally used. So there's different businesses that you can collaborate and disrupt. So start developing a solution and put it as a plugin and you can resell it. So instead of you competing with Netflix, is look at the gaps that Netflix has and offer those as a solution. Right. Okay. Off to the next question. This is from Sharifa Shaika. Uh, uh, she said, hello, Miss Paula. My name is Thika and I have a question. What if I have many great ideas for business? Which one should I choose first to initiate the business? How do I know that this idea is better than that one? And so I should start with this one as opposed to that one. So go back to your Ikigai, the first activity that we did, which is what do you love doing that the world needs? So look at all of the business ideas and just go, which is the business idea that I love the most, but I have the most amount of skills? Because Seika, no matter how, many, how much money we give you, so if we were to give you $100 million today, it doesn't mean your business is going to be successful. But if that business uses a lot of your natural skills and strengths and you're truly passionate about it, you will find solutions. So when we are building a business, the bigger the problem, the bigger the opportunity. But try to pick a business that uses as many of your skills as possible. For example, I love technology. I use technology every day. But if I had to sit in the back of a computer coding lines of code for an app or a website, no, thank you. I will starve because I'm going to get bored and I'm not going to complete and I'm not going to focus. So you build a business around things that you love. Now, if you tell me to start, I don't know, a marketing agency or for me to write a book and do public speaking around the world, you don't even need to ask me to do it because I will straight away start because these are things that I naturally absolutely love doing. So find uh, within all of your ideas and we all have thousands of ideas on a daily basis. We have 80,000 thoughts a day. So just imagine the amount of ideas that can come out of those things. So find the idea that you look at it just like, this is the easiest one for me to start because I have the most amount of skills. This is the one that will cost me the little less amount of time and money to start. And use what we've just explained, the proof of concept. Go out there in the world and just go, I've got an idea, who wants it? Go on Instagram and post 10 photos and tell people to vote for which one's the best one, which one do they wanna buy? Go build a website and put a shopping cart and see how many people put those products in the shopping cart. And then when they're about to put the credit card, just go sold out. We will contact you once we receive the product. Collect those emails. And if you see that 100 people ask for their product in the next 24 hours, go and start the business. Right. Okay. Paula, we only have five minutes left to our uh, MOU signing and webinar, but I do want to know more about, and that was all the questions that we have in the chat box, unless Nico has received something else or some people would like to raise hands. But I would like to know more about the, uh, uh, in, uh, maybe you can share in Academy of Entrepreneurs, what was or what has been the most successful um, idea turned into business that you have coached under um, Academy of Entrepreneurs, if you can share that, if it's not still conf confidential, of course. And what is what is the dollar value to that? And how long did it take as a project to start and then launch and then operate? Okay, so we last year educated over half a million students. So it will be very hard saying which one was the best and greatest because different countries have different opportunities. But I'll share with you guys a case study of a story that just shows how everything is possible, but you need to be very honest with yourself and connect with your life purpose and understand what is the lifestyle that you want. So we had a student from Spain coming over to study with us. She was doing a four week program, very similar to the first one that we're gonna be doing with you guys. And she came in and she was great at cooking absolutely fantastic at cooking she started bringing food to the class and it was all vegetarian healthy beautiful presentable and we're looking at her we're like okay you're launching a restaurant right and she just went well, yes i'm launching a restaurant i love cooking and then we're like okay do you understand that running a restaurant is not just about making pretty food for instagram once a week you're actually operating a kitchen with stock and managing staff and logistic and sign offs and compliance from the government and she just went oh I don't want to be stuck in a restaurant I want to be on Instagram I want to be out I want to be networking making an impact I want to be talk doing inspirational talks then we're like okay if you like doing that have you considered getting these amazing recipes and starting a cookbook and you can run classes on Instagram Facebook TikTok do a cookbook and sell collaborate with celebrity chefs collaborate with brands she just went mm, I don't really like writing 
I like videos and I like products and I like negotiating. So in between her research, she came across coconut balls that came from Vietnam. She saw an article around how we consume a lot of coconut over in Southeast Asia. Coconut milk, can we use coconut in different products with the coconut rice and so forth. The skin of the coconut can be turned into fabric, but often the coconut shell gets thrown away. And that is a huge proportion of it. And the coconut shell is so strong. You can rewash it something like 20,000 times and it doesn't dry out. You can do almost everything except put it in a microwave and a dishwasher. Everything else you can use it like almost infinite times. So she just went, hmm, this is sustainable. I can put healthy recipes in it. It's Instagrammable. I can sell around the world. I can start an e-commerce and she loves traveling. She was used to traveling one country every week. So she just went, I'm good at digital marketing. I love promoting things online with people. I love taking photos. I love being the boss of my future, but I also want to have the lifestyle so I can travel. So she decided to put $100, $100 and buy coconut balls. Before the coconut balls arrived, she was already marketing things on Instagram using different photos and photoshopping it without spending a single cent started collecting money and within the first year she made one hundred thousand dollars on the second year she hit four hundred thousand and this year i'm currently mentoring her and we're going to be making a million dollars and potentially the one million dollars will come just from one contract that we managed to find so we didn't have to raise funds she's doing what she loved and in between the craziness of last year she got stuck between different borders and different states she was operating her business and she grew her business every single month month by month she launched the tiktok because no one had tiktok over 12 months ago when she launched her business and she used the different platforms and she is an absolute success not just in australia but also in the united states and in europe without having to spend too much money she just invests it back to what she made so she started a business with a hundred dollars and made a hundred thousand in the first year that's an example of a business you don't need to launch the next airbnb uber and net to succeed or to be happy you need to launch a business around your natural strengths and your lifestyle. So it's very important for us to always consider what type of entrepreneur do you be? Me, I love working hours. I don't mind. Happy to do it. It's important for you guys to understand what kind of you want to have when you are starting a business. Do you want to be involved in the technology space, social impact? Do you want to launch a social enterprise and offer profit? Do you care about the environment? Do you care about creating impact? Do you care about just Indonesia? Do you care about promoting Indonesian products and culture to the rest of the world to activate tourism? Do you want to run a business online, a face-to-face? -face? Do you want to have bakeries around your city? It doesn't matter. What problem are you solving and how do you use your strengths every day? All right. What problems are you solving? And no business is too small. I welcome participants here. If they have uh, direct questions that they want to ask, uh, I can open the you can open the microphone and uh, directly ask Paula. I can see Daisy with her camera on. Nice to meet you, Daisy. How are you? Lovely. Hi, day. hi, Paula. I'm I'm good. Hey, Daisy, oh. talk about what is it that you're doing? Do you have a business idea? What are your questions? Yeah, Julie, I have a question and I love your presentation. And I also love the hashtag for your future. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually wonder how important do you think the role of the business partner when we start the business or when we build the business? Because, you know, when we, we're going to start a business, sometimes we kind of like lost and we don't know how to start and we have someone to, um, we invite someone to come over with us. But then, um, I'm just wondering, is it really important to have a business partner or do you think it's best to just start it by your own? Okay, so there's multiple answers to this and I can't make the decision for you. First of all, I would like to recommend you a book called Slicing Pie. So I'm going to put the name of the book here. It's by Mike Moyer. So 100% recommend everybody to read this book, Slicing Pie by Mike okay so number one read this book then understand that different businesses have different stage opening a business with the best friend can sound like the greatest idea you have ever because you've got your best friend and you and her agree on everything and you like going to the same place like having coffee together and talking about fun things and making the world a better place but do your best friends have the skills that you need do you complement each other because if you two are too similar 
You don't need her skills. You need someone that is good at the things you're not good at. Also understand, where are you going to go take your business? In the next month, in the next year, the next three years. Because right now, it might be okay that you give 50% shares to your best friends. But then what happens if your best friend decides to get married and doesn't want to work in the business anymore? And now she owns 50% of your business. That's true. Really what happens yeah. it is you give a business to someone and they get sick or they change their priorities or they get given a dream job at Google or the United Nations and they just abandon, but they still own shares in your business. Mm -hmm. But If you have a best friend or a potential business partner that can collaborate with you. So for example, say you are amazing at strategy, networking, talking to investors, to customers, being on the media and this potential co-founder, it's fantastic at coding. And that is a vital skill that you need for your business that person will be able to support you for many more months. We'll be able to build the team once we need extra people in that. So just have an open conversation and understand and put that on the contract and work in stages. My recommendation is maybe start by creating two different businesses and one sells service to the other. So you go, okay, we will pay each other the same amount for the hour. I'll bring the client and for every hour I'll pay you, you send me an invoice and start like that. And if it works really well, then you can manage both businesses. Then you can bring investors and so forth. But try partnering and testing out the waters before, because in the beginning, it's all very exciting or very lonely. A lot of people get business partners because they're going, oh, but I want someone that I can talk to. And who knows? Maybe your business partner is busy with the partner or they're studying an MBA and they're not even going to have time. And then you lose shares. And maybe they were interested in the business idea, but they don't have the skills that you need. So my suggestion is set up two different businesses, get the client and split the work, the profit. And then if they work 60% of the time on the month, pay them 60% and you keep less money, but be honest about it. So yeah, I believe that businesses is about a win-win situation. So everything that I do, I want everybody winning. I don't want even 0.0001% feeling like if someone's stealing something from me, I'm like, I don't trust you. I don't want to work with you. So test the waters before and make sure that it's a win-win. And if it's natural within this partnership to turn it into one business where you decide on the shares, go for it, but take steps. But please read this book, Slicing. Oh, sorry, um, Nico has... Slicing five, yeah. Slicing five, yeah. It is an incredible, very easy to read. Look, first time I read it, I read it on a Saturday. Wow. I read it in one airport and another in a four-hour flight between Sydney and New Zealand. So it's a very easy to read book. If you are in a rush, go on YouTube and listen. And if you want, I can introduce you to the author of the book as well. He's very reachable and incredible entrepreneur. He's based um, at a, a Chicago University over mm -hmm. in the United States. Very approachable. So I highly recommend you to read this book because he talks about different formulas. You can bring someone as a business partner that just puts money and they get four times whatever they're putting into the business. They put time and they get paid for two times more and they don't take the money or the vesting that they start slowly investing through time. So it's called vesting into a business. And it also teaches you about exit strategies. Where do you stop the vesting from increasing? It's so simple. It's the first time in history, I think, that someone made business partnership and share division logical for anyone in any country. So yeah, 100% recommend you to read this book before. But fantastic question. Wow, Thank super. Thank you. All right. Well, Paula, that brings us to the end of our event uh, this afternoon. Uh, what a wonderful event. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Uh, um, our you know, utmost appreciation for uh, goes to the rector of Universitas Esa Ungul. Uh, despite his busy schedule, he, he, he's with us to the end of the program. And uh, the dean, the vice deans uh, from Esa Ungul in various faculties and prodis or program studies, uh, students, uh, my friends at and my team at the international um, office, I thank you so much for participating. And of course, uh, our new partner from Academy of Entrepreneurs, Paula Mills. I thank guess that's the God. end. And Elise and everybody that helped us. A pleasure. So everyone, please take uh, that very good opportunity that Paula mentioned. Uh, we are now a partner, so we can access all information and events um, held or will be, hold, will be held by uh, Academy of Entrepreneurs and, and, and the information are all on their website. And we'll talk more 
Paula, um, on how we can translate it into more activities for both institutions. Okay. I'm posting here our Instagram, and I know that Nico posted our my personal one as well. But Ed right, yeah. Pa Rector, would you like to give uh, um, like a very short closing remarks? Oh no, just thank you for all, all the complete and nice presentation and. It's very useful for us, for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, nice to know you and nice to your to know inter, your institution. Thank you, Dr. Ruth. And I want to see all of your students bossing the future and creating a positive impact in Indonesia. Let's rebuild the economy. Let's showcase all of the amazingness that we have in Indonesia from foods to fashion to culture. Yes, to sir. To the brains as well. Some of the smartest, caring people that I've ever met. So. Let's make a positive impact together. And Faisal will work with us on making sure that our curriculum is always adapted and future focused for the Indonesian market trends and needs. So yes. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen, if you are not inspired and if you don't have any ideas yet on what to uh, embark for your business, maybe as Paula said, you can log or check the SDGs website and see if any of the goals in the sustainable development goals can inspire you or you can spot a problem there and um, bridge the gap and create a business. I thank everyone again. Uh, terima kasih banyak atas participasinya, Bapak Ibu sekalian. Selamat sore semuanya. Uh, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Sampai ketemu. See you. Waalaikumsalam. Is this thing?